everyone welcome back to my channel if you are a subscriber and if you are new here hi my name is brogan and i make videos about sewing fashion and all things crafty today i am so excited for this video it's one of my most highly requested and i'm going to be taking you through from start to finish how i make a shirt dress i'm not actually making this for myself today i'm making it for my gorgeous big sister who wants another shirt dress and i don't blame her because they are addictive so she's chosen the fabric and i'm going to be sewing it up for her there are quite a few options on the market for shirt dress patterns but my favorite way to do it and it's how i started i did my first shirt dress this way was to self draft it is literally made out of four rectangles of fabric it couldn't be easier and i love it because you can pretty much sew it in a day and it's perfect for beginners too so if you feel like doing some sewing today and you fancy making your first shirt dress grab some fabric thread up your machine and let's get sewing the first thing that you need is your choice of fabric this is the fabric that my sister has chosen i think it's absolutely gorgeous it's a white poly cotton with pink flowers on with little green bits this was a bargain from ebay if you're looking for affordable fabric i would always recommend looking on ebay i think this was about three pound meter which compared to what you can spend on fabric is an absolute steal when it comes to fabric choice for a shirt dress i would say you pretty much have two main options the first is using a cotton or a poly cotton like i am today that's going to give a dress with a bit more body and a nice crisp feel I have also made a shirt dress in viscose before, which is a lovely option if you want something a bit more floaty and a bit softer. I always tend to go for three meters when I'm buying fabric for my shirt dresses. Then I have the option to go shorter or longer on the dress. So I would say, depending on your sizing, you could maybe go up or down a meter to half a meter on that. Next few things you'll need are haberdashery items. So you will obviously need some matching thread. I'm just going for white today to match my fabric. Also very important for shearing, you will need some shearing elastic. So I tend to buy my packs of this in bulk. It just seems cheaper that way. Again, I got this on eBay um, and it is just very skinny, skinny elastic. I search shearing elastic and it comes up online and you'll probably need about four to five reels of this just to make sure you've got enough. And lastly, we are going to be doing elasticated shoulders, so you will also need some elastic to put through that. I've been a bit silly and realised I don't have any thin enough in my stash, so this is definitely thicker than I would normally use, and I'm going to be cheeky and trim this down. Would not recommend, I would usually go for between one centimetre and one and a half centimetres width in this. I would always recommend before starting to sew pre-washing your fabric. I've put this through just a quick wash in my machine and it means that in the future when my sister washes the dress, there is no risk of it shrinking at all. Now it's time for measurements. So regardless of if you're sewing this for yourself or for someone else, you're gonna need three key measurements to be able to make this dress. The first is the measurement around your bust. So I obviously already have all the measurements for my sister, but to measure your bust, you are just gonna go round the top of your bust like this or the person you're sewing for. And this is the measurement that you're gonna need. Next, we need the measurement for your sleeve. So we're just gonna pop the measuring tape under our arm and measure there and lastly this can be tricky on your own but you're going to need to measure how long you want the dress to be um obviously if you're making it for someone else that's really easy you can just stand them up and measure but if i'm making it for myself i tend to just hold the fabric up against me full length and eyeball it Apologies for the fact that you have to deal with one of my rubbish drawings again, but I'm going to talk you through the four pieces that you need to cut out from your fabric. For the main dress, we just need two big rectangles. So the width is going to be the total measurement of your bust. So the measurement that I've got for my sister is 80 centimetres. So I'm going to cut it out the same width as all the way around her bust. And then the length that I'm going to do is a midi length dress. My sister is fairly short like me so I'm going to do it 106 centimeters in length and you just want to remember that we're going to have to take up some of the uh, length for the hem and also we're going to be hemming the top of the dress as well 
So just remember to add on a couple of centimetres either side to your length measurement. Then we need two sleeves as well. And again, we need the width to be 80 centimetres, funnily enough. Um, her around the arm measurement was 40 centimetres. So to make sure it's a nice puffy sleeve, I've doubled that to give me the 80. If you wanted a slightly less puffy sleeve, you might want to do one and a half times your arm measurement. It's completely up to you as to how much volume you want in there. And then I am doing, for reference, my length as 48 centimetres. So that is going to be a three quarter length sleeve. But again, you can make that shorter or longer depending on your preference. So here I am cutting out. I just wanted to show you a bit of how I do it. So I'm taking my tape measure and at different intervals, I'm measuring my 80 centimetres across and just marking with pins. And then I am cutting that out following the line of pins. And as a bit of a tip, just to make it quicker, I'm making sure my fabric's flat underneath and placing the piece that I've already cut out on top, matching up the edges. And then I'm just going to follow the edge of that fabric and cut along that edge. And I'm very pleased because I have some fabric left over. Yay! So that is all the preparation work done and now it's time to get sewing. So I have threaded up my machine with matching white thread and I've also got white thread just on my overlocker there. An overlocker is not essential for this project so if you do not have one instead of finishing your seams on there you can use a zigzag stitch on your normal machine just to finish the raw edges. Also for reference I'm using a one centimeter seam allowance at all times on this dress. Now is the extremely exciting bit, the machine is on, we're ready to go. So the first step is to take both of your main dress pieces. I have put them right sides together so I can't see the pattern anymore, it's together and I am pinning all the way down each of the long sides. So we're gonna start by sewing the side seams and at the same time, I have folded each of my sleeves in half and we are going to do the same thing down the side seam of the sleeve. Okay, the seams have been sewn. I've now knit to the other room that I've got the iron set up in. Um, fun fact, this is the M2 room that will be the nursery. So if it sounds really echoey, that is why. So you've seen that I've sewn the seams and I've pressed those. And now we've got some other pressing to do to finish the hem edges. So I'm gonna show you that now. Here I've got the main dress pieces sewn together and then a sleeve as an example. So I pressed both of the seams that we just sewed and on the top edge of the dress, I am now going to hem. So this is gonna be what forms the very top of our frill all the way around the dress. So all I've done is I have folded under and pressed about half a centimeter and then done that again. And what I'm gonna do is put pins all the way along here and we will sew that edge at the top of the dress. I've then done the same for the bottom of one of the sleeves. So I'm going to do the other one in a minute. So this is already pinned, but I've just double folded it over. So that's the bottom of each sleeve. And then if I show you the other end of the sleeve, this is where we are going to have the elastic casing. So we need to make a channel that the elastic is going to go in so that it sits around our shoulder. So again, I fold it under that half a centimetre and then this time, depending on how wide your elastic is, you want to do the second fold wide enough to fit around the elastic. So I would say that mine is about two centimetres wide and my elastic would be one and a half centimetres. I've pinned all the way around and I've left this gap here to remind me that I'm only sewing uh, part way round to leave a little gap. So I'm gonna do the same with the other sleeve now.
We're back to the machine and I am stitching all the way along those seams that we pressed. So this is going to end up being the very top frill on the dress. And I'm going to do the same in a minute for the sleeves and the elastic casing, which I will show you. You know what? It was so sunny earlier. So sunny that I have my denim shorts on. And now I just feel like a fool because it is super grey. Looks like it's going to rain. And I have shorts on. Okay, just a little check in. This is my sleeve. This is what the bottom looks like now. So I've hemmed the bottom of the sleeve. And then this is the top. So you can see that now I've got a channel here. I've sewn all the way along the very bottom of the bit that I folded over. And I've got the channel, the elastic's gonna go through, but I have left about an inch to an inch and a half space here where I've not sewn so that I can pass through my elastic when we get onto the sleeves. Now we are on to the exciting bit and that is the start of the shirring. Now it's worth taking your time to really do the preparation properly because it's all these little bits that come together and make the shirring work or not. So we're going to get a length of our elastic like so. And start by just winding a tiny bit onto the bobbin. And I'm just holding this here so it doesn't go anywhere. And then we're going to start going around the bobbin like so. So at no point am I stretching the elastic at all. I'm just holding it so that it can easily run through my fingers and wind onto the bobbin. Now is putting the bobbin in the machine. So I'm placing it in and really making sure that the elastic still goes through the grooves in my machine. They're hidden under here, but the tension grooves. Then I am going to just chop this tail a little bit. And you do not want your machine to just start sewing and to have to pull this up manually. I'm actually gonna use my um, hand wheel there and just turn the wheel, holding the thread, pull it a little bit. And you can see that now we've got this little tail here and my elastic has been pulled up into my machine. Now it's time to think about our settings on our machine. I always start with a scrap of the same fabric that I'm using, so it's the same weight, and I can test out if I need to alter anything. This is where you're gonna have to play around. Every machine is different. The settings that I use might not work for you, but I am gonna show you what I do use and hopefully something close to that should be okay. It's on normal settings. The first thing I do is I go to the tension wheel and I'm gonna put that all the way up to tension nine. That is the highest it will go. Now I'm gonna go to stitch length and you want the length of stitches to be really long. So I'm putting mine up to maximum of 4.5. No fabric is the same, so I'm going to grab my scrap, start sewing, and see if the shivering is working. My machine has gathered up the fabric. It should be nice and stretchy. And then the back of the fabric looks like this all of the stitches are even you can see the thread catching in the elastic there and there's a lot of movement in that fabric obviously i've done this shearing malarkey many times so please don't expect it to just go together like that straight away i've had to spend hours previously playing around with things but the main things you might need to change is the tension and the stitch length so just start by changing one of 
or the other by just one increment at a time so that you can see the difference and what's really happening to your fabric and hopefully you'll find the settings that work for you. We're all set up, I've got my main dress piece here. The right side of the fabric is up because the elastic wants to go on the wrong side of the fabric and we are gonna start shearing. I am gonna start my first line just about half a centimeter underneath this hem stitch that we did, which is gonna produce however much of a frill you want at the very top of the dress. So if you wanted a bigger frill, you might want to start it slightly further away or a smaller frill slightly closer, it's completely up to you. So I'm gonna line up, just so I know where I'm sewing, the edge of my presser foot with this line of stitches. And here we go. First row is done, and this is what it's looking like. Obviously, this is still fairly big, um, you will find that the shearing gets tighter and tighter as you carry on. So don't worry if your first row looks a little bit like mine because it will carry on going in and also a final steam at the end really sucks in the elastic and makes it tighter too. Here I am a few rows deep and I just wanted to give you a few technique tips. So as you can see, as it's going through my machine, I'm making sure to keep stretching out the fabric so it remains completely flat and I'm keeping my presser foot at an even distance from the row of stitches before. And at the end, I'm doing a little back stitch to make sure I secure the elastic in the threads and then carefully cutting that. Here is the lines that I've done. It's looking nice and even and stretchy. And then by this time I had to rewind another bobbin. You will have to do this many times uh, back to the machine we go, doing another few rows. You do get used to it, it just takes a long time. But it's very therapeutic, I would say. And tea break time, because you deserve it. Fun fact, I also had a little like chocolate chip cookie. Well, I had a bite and then the rest of it dropped in my tea. Which, for any tea and biscuit lovers, you will know that that is the single most disappointing thing that can happen so uh now i'm having chocolate chip flavored tea anyways we have done the main shearing so i showed you before i have my tea the main bodice of the dress is done now we are going to do the shearing that means that the sleeve stays up so what i've done is just using some pins i have measured three and a half inches from the bottom of my sleeve, so the side that we hemmed, I've measured three and a half inches up and just at points along the way, I've marked with pins. You could do that with Taylor's chalk if you prefer, but I've just put a few markings and we are gonna do exactly the same shearing process, but do three rows. Just a bit of a tip for you, for this bit, I have a side arm that I can remove from my machine, which means that I can actually sit the sleeve on this smaller bit. So if your machine has the function to do that, I would always recommend for doing the sleeves. So the sleeves are done. As you can see, we've got that little cuff there. This will come in a little bit more as well when we steam um, the shearing at the end. So now is always a good point before we move on to just take a minute to trim all the loose threads that we've got because obviously each row of shearing has given us about four threads. So I'm going to go through all my pieces and just tidy them up a bit now before I do anything else. Apologies if you can now hear the lovely sound of my neighbour cutting his grass, <laughs> but we're going to carry on. We are getting so close to the end of the dress now. All we have left to do is elasticate the sleeves, attach them and hem the dress. <laughs> so exciting. To do the elasticated sleeves, I have measured my elastic like we did before by just placing it around um, my underarm to check that the fit is okay and you want about a one centimeter to one and a half centimeter overlap so we can sew and to thread this through i am going to use my safety pin so i'm going to attach 
the safety pin to one end of my elastic, you are going to grab a sleeve and find that little hole that we left and start to put the safety pin through that hole and holding it we should be able to start feeding the elastic through like so. Now we don't want to lose the end of our elastic inside the channel so once I get far enough along to just have a small tail I will get a pin and pin that elastic to the opening so it can't go any further and my other tip would be to just take your time on this we've come so far there's no point in rushing now um, and just really feel the elastic all the way along the channel to avoid letting it turn round and get all scrunched up because if it gets twisted there is nothing worse and you'll just have to pull it out and start again. Now I'm all the way back round so you can see my safety pin starting to poke out so I will pull it through so I've got my other end, take my safety pin off and now I'm going to cross over my elastic and put some stitches here. I will do quite a few stitches forward and back, forward and back to make sure that that elastic isn't going anywhere. All that's left to do is to gently sort of stretch out that elastic to encourage the end to go in. Then we're gonna stretch this fabric so it lays flat and finish sewing along the gap that we left to close it all up. And as you can see, we will have a puffy sleeve. Once we have both sleeves done, you want to find the side seam of your dress. So mine is here. And the side seam or the underarm seam of the sleeve. And we are going to pin so that those seams match on the dress. So here it is pinned. You've got the two seams matching and we've got a little bit of a gap. And now I'm going to sew from here to here to attach the sleeve. Now we have the two sleeves attached so they're just attached in that one place at the underarm seam and then the elastic shoulder is just going to hold up the rest of the dress. What you are going to want to do now is try on the dress if it's yours or get the person you're making it for to try on and just double check the length and we are going to hem the bottom of the dress in exactly the same way that we did for the top so just double fold and sew and we're going to give the dress a final steam just to make all of the elastic shrink in and make sure the dress is nice and tight. We have a dress! Here it is. I've just sewn the hem. So double turn that. I did it a bit thicker than along the top, but that's completely personal preference, so it's up to you. And the very last step, which isn't essential, but I do tend to like to add on, especially if I'm making for someone else, is a cute little label. So I've gone through my stash. I have a lot of labels and I picked out a few that I like. So I've got this one that says party dress. But I do also have this one that says Proud as Punch and it's in like cute little sweetie colours. Um, most of my labels are from Kylie and the Machine, by the way. I had their advent calendar. And I think because this is quite tropical colours, I just like this little label on here as well. And just like that, we have a finished dress. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you love the dress. I'm sure my sister is gonna look absolutely gorgeous in it. I will make sure to get it to her very soon. If you decide to recreate this dress, make sure you tag me on Instagram. 
it's at the crafty pie i have to see all these gorgeous dresses i feel like we could just make one big girl gang of sure dress lovers so make sure you tag me in those photos and i'd love it if you could like and subscribe if you haven't already i'll see you in my next video have an amazing weekend bye